once they hit the gym one, two times and they got the six pack in the, the arms, gas. everything's showing. Muscle memory. Yeah. In there. Forget What's... the fitness of the world. They're showing it. Did you get what I mean? Grownish, smartish, British. We are British, apparently. Uh -huh. What size do you want? 24. Extra small, oh, bro. We have different struggles in life, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, I just got so low. Um, so I'm glad you're here because you kind of made it obvious that you, you made a status thing on um, Instagram where you said it's important to have a woman on production. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember where your friend had an eyelash yeah, yeah, out of yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, today, when we're doing angles, I'm like, Sit yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And me. you already had been here, so you know. That, like, yeah, I know the angles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have yeah. to finesse the angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a um, podcast catfish. Right. See, I thought you were gonna say like you're glad I'm here because I feel like I was trying to be on time. Oh, and that too. Listen, <laughs> when I called you, I'm like, listen to her surroundings. Yeah, Is I was she in the car. Home? Is she in the <laughs> toilet echoing? Like we need to. Know. <laughs> and I felt like you intentionally said because I think you said one first, but then you thought, nah, she's gonna be late. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown people time. Listen, it's ethnic minority. People say it's black time, and it's not black time, and it's yeah. ethnic minority time. Yeah. And I feel like I do it worse sometimes. Yeah, no, no, my whole family yeah. do it. It's okay, absolutely good. jarring. Yeah, like they'll be, I'll be coming from Croydon, and um, I have to say, for, after every um, insert vomit after Croydon. Sorry wow. to anyone that lives in Croydon, <clears throat> but um. I can be coming from Croydon, going all the way to North London. Okay. I'm here getting my son ready, getting myself ready. I get to her mum's yard. My sister's like, I'm about to jump in the shower. I'm like, I swear to God. <laughs> and wow. you're here rushing me. Wow. Is that you? No, I just don't even rush people. Because <laughs> I just, yeah, because if I'm going to be late, I'd rather someone else be worse, like later. It makes you feel better. Yeah, so I just don't even rush them. You know I thought you were still at home because I was like, let me listen to her surroundings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. The first time I drop called you, I was like, ah, I'm still walking down the stairs. <laughs> She's going to Oh, clock. okay, okay. So I got in my car. I went, yeah, where you at? <laughs> okay. How long did it take you to come? 25 minutes. Oh. Yeah, it's only like five minutes apart from you and I. Yeah. We're close. But yeah, we how are. I knew what time you're yeah. running on was the day you and I went to the park. Yeah. And then you got a phone call from your family going, there's a family dinner in half an hour. And you're like, yeah, 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 I'm around the corner. More times the dinner is in East London. Yeah. And we weren't yeah. moving. And we, we, were were still still got, we were still yet to go to your house. And that And too. we were yet to still like eat food at your house. Yeah. And you were fully like having conversation with your family, like you were around the corner. Yeah. Because for them, as long as I turn up, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, Even if it's like five minutes, she showed face. She showed face, yeah. Because that's the least. That's the most you might get at some days. Do you get what I mean? Doesn't that bother you that you're never on time? Do you I not want to improve yourself. You, you know, can't just be like my this is me. No, it's my daily jihad. <laughs> Even today, I said I can't disappoint Hebs because you know what it is. Is some people don't care because they're late as well. Yeah, no, I run on white people time. Yeah, I'm a so Karen when it comes. When, to yeah, that. and when when I've got friends like that, I just try to be on time. But then my friends also know, give me a time that's far earlier. So I need to give you an hour notice. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, because well, then I'm you, like probably coming ten minutes before. You you were running like twenty minutes late. But yeah, it's yeah. But I was outside for like ten minutes. Yeah, because you didn't know how to press the button. I didn't know, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've been gone for a minute. This is season three. You have been. Guys, we're listening to and watching Growing Up Brit-ish. And if it's the first time you're seeing this, please go back and watch. Um, the whole concept of Growing Up Brit-ish, surely you should know by now, that you're not really British when you're not white. Yeah. Like, it, as, a, as an ethnic minority. Yeah. You can say you're British, but someone to remind you yeah. you're not from there. And also, we struggle with going back home and them saying, "Oh, you're foreign." Yeah, like you go. I go back to Egypt, and I'm like, "I'm Egyptian." They're like, "No, you're foreign." And I'm like, "Ah, where do I belong?" So yeah, as a third yeah, culture yeah, kid, yeah, yeah. we have struggles we that do. we can all relate to. They're not exactly the same. So I thought, let's let's run with this one. Yep. So I saw you first on Word on the Curb. Oh. <laughs> Great. Um, how was that filming it? I mean, I know you still yeah, work, you still yeah, do stuff Yeah, and it was, it was so spontaneous. They're such a lovely production team, honestly. They're so amazing, lovely. It looks like a vibe. No, they are. They All of them, all yeah. of them are amazing. And the people I've met from them as well, lovely people. Mm -mm -mm. Um, I was just going with my friend because she was filming with them. Yeah. And I must have made a comment, oh, look, I, would, I, I wouldn't mind doing this. And then they needed a girl that day. Well, there and then. Yeah, That's so it. they were just like, okay, do you want to do it then? And I was just like, 
oh I'm not sure because it was a dating show but yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know it was a dating show because with me I don't ever check things beforehand I've learned you just pull up and yeah. pray for the best I've learned from my mistake though now I'll, I'll, I'll screen you <laughs> yeah yeah we can yeah. discuss the, that the, yeah yeah so I'll definitely now screen you but yeah I was just um they, it was my first show and it was it was lovely because I was on a date with Chris mm. who I'm really good friends with now like he's a really cool guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just a bit of fun do you get what yeah. I mean but people thought I was actually intentionally dating and it was how, just like how did people react to that like as no they as... loved me yeah they loved me on my short clips That's my longer sick. clips oh sorry um my longer clips um I didn't get as much love, but I think it's because people thought it, I was actually on there today and didn't see my previous episodes. Mm-mm-mm. So they, they didn't know that I was a like reoccurring figure. But do you know, like, there's a lot of online keyboard warriors. Oh, yeah. Who are just too fast to tell you yeah. about yourself and your intentions yeah. and what you're trying to do. And this is yeah. like, ah, boo, it's not that deep. I and- have never, like, I swear to God, I have never gone on the internet and said, I need to make a comment about this person. But they how- need a hug. Those yeah. people need a hug. Yeah. They they have nothing popping yeah. <laughs> in life. Honestly, I wonder like what state you have to be in. You gotta be. You gotta be. Yeah, needing a lot of love. Yeah, something inside you is not happy. Yeah, so I don't reflecting your energy. Yeah, I don't others. even know anyone like that I know in my circle or like wider circle. That you does wouldn't that. know because they'll have some undercover Instagram that you That's don't even true. know about. They that could they, be sitting right yeah. next to you. Yeah. Imagine. Um, but yes. Yeah, so <laughs> um. I want to know also with that. Obviously, you said you were loved a lot, but obviously, you being Muslim, yeah. What happened? Because I know what it feels like yeah. putting material out, and then you have the haram police, yeah, coming that straight up. Off. Yeah, let me cover my arms <laughs> quick. How how bad was it? Like when <laughs> you know, did you get anything bad? Do you know what it is? Is I feel like I look kind of ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, because yeah. they can't put a race or faith or culture or something on me, yeah, I don't get as much hate. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah so yeah. I don't think people associate Islam with me because obviously you know why would they? I'm not mm. representing. Um, but also, um, yeah, I feel like because I look a bit ambiguous, they didn't also know. Like they would have come. I think if they knew I was fully Bengali, I would have definitely got a lot of the hate. The Bengalis can pick you out though. Surely, yeah, I you think have, like you some... have a Bengali vibe. I think sometimes don't get offended, but that's a compliment. No, 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 no. I feel like sometimes, yeah, sometimes people can be obviously even like within Asians that like, I can say, okay, no, you're definitely Indian or Pakistani, yeah, yeah, yeah. just because yeah, culturally, I think we show some certain things. But um, sometimes, do your parents know about podcasts? No, like no, no one in my family. Oh my god! They How do you live this double life? Do you know what my 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 nie- ne- nephews and nieces do? Because obviously it goes viral, especially that age group. Yeah, yeah they and then they'll the get like it. they'll be like, oh my god, yeah, we saw you. Or their friends will be like, oh yeah, we saw you. But no, it's been good responses. It's been really good responses. That's good. That's good. But even like with the um, haram police, like I've had a few comments, but I'm just like, okay, it, does it bother you? Huh? Does it bother you? Like if you're being honest with yourself. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wish you just knew me. Yeah, like I wish you yeah. just really knew me. But that's the reality; they only see yeah. what's put out there, and, that's and it's it. like, it, it, you, and in real life, I'm a vibe. Do you get what I mean? So it's like Your I wish you just. Re- <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's funny is I've got so much love on the street from word on the curve. <laughs> Every, even yesterday, I went out. I went to a court like a, I can never say the word Korean, a Korean, a yeah. Korean. Um, because I say Korean. <laughs> You're a freshie. This is how you know. She, <laughs> That's my she east side coming. Yeah, my Bengali <laughs> east side. No, so like, yeah, I went to a, a Korean oh, geez, um, girl, you food post. spot. <laughs> yeah. And the, there was a girl standing outside. And I'm like, oh my God, you're Soraya. And I was like, yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah, nice. and like, even when I go out now, like It's a nice lot. being recognised. Yeah, 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 and it's always positive. It's not like negative. So yeah. No, it's nice. When I see, when I've been pulled up in the past, they'll be like, are you Hebs? Or oh, they know me because of my son. But like, because I used to be on my pod, like on my um on my Instagram quite heavy. Yeah. Like, oh, is it, are you the one that has a, do- a son that's got blue eyes or green eyes? And oh. I'm like, yeah, so don't yeah. rate me, just rate my well, child. That's fine. Yeah. But that's the whole point. Like, I wanted to sit with you because people see one side of you. Yeah. Which is very playful, and yeah. and I think people perceive me as quite serious. But then if you know me on the level, like if you see my rants on Instagram, they know I banter all the time. Yeah. But people hear my podcast, they're like, right, you're taking it deep. Yeah. Like you're not here for fun, and I'm just like. Mm. My, my personality snaps and I'm kind of yeah, funny yeah, still. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And I feel like I was doing a lot more content that was a bit more playful. And now I'm doing a lot more like serious context and content and like mm. podcasting. But even like coming back to the Haram police, I feel like they're a lot more harsher on women than 100%. men. Hundred percent. Like you've got Muslim men on the internet doing all sorts, but you won't pull them up. But as soon as a woman is on there, and it's just like 
straight away and I'm like, whoa. Like, for example, you've got like, just say Chunks, Feely, Harry Panero. That's exactly what I've said. If before. we were to yeah. do stuff like that, yeah. men will troll us, but, but we're I, funny. But that's it, that's it. Yeah. So it's like, they're like, oh, sister, why are you speaking? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. stay at home and cook, do yeah. onions. But I yeah. said the same thing yeah. when I was on Waffle Top. I spoke to them about it and I said, by default, men don't lose any no, status. Yeah. They don't lose any respect yeah. by being themselves on social media, yeah. on, on podcasts. They can talk crud as like, they know it's banter. It's clear it's banter. But the minute you want to banter as a woman, or like men don't rate you as much because yeah. you're talking about certain things. So yeah. there's almost like men are protected by default. Because even if they spoke about how many m- women they've slept with, and so I'm, I'm very mindful that like, chunks and blah are very they don't talk about these things. But if they had, it's not as if they're going to become less hubby material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still who they are and they can see their personality and be like, oh, it's their past. Whereas yeah. if it was a woman, they'd be like, yeah, girl, you're tainted for life. But even if it's not like a religious, even mm. if it's just socially, yeah, yeah, yeah. a man sleeping with a hundred girls That's it. That's what is I'm saying. not the same. Like, religion aside, men by men default. Men get, yeah, get a lot of more past, but, Whereas women will sleep other women, men will sleep with other women. It's just like well, one never wins. Listen, you're taking me to speak about that podcast, and I'm ugh, no, I'm but still do you know suffering. what? Do you know what? I actually watched part of it yesterday and this morning, and I actually <sighs> sat down with my husband. I'm married now, by the way, guys. Woo! We need to talk about that. We do indeed. Um, and we watched it, and he can see like it is antagonizing. And I and I said to him, I don't ever want to be on a podcast where I feel like it's not beneficial yeah like there's a difference between having a good vibe I mean you can sit here and talk nonsense for a whole hour but we're vibed and it's good energy yeah or you and I have deep something and play been playful as well but to just sit here so I'm here just to purposely antagonize you and I'm gonna be here the whole time no other content besides I just want bait clicks yeah and that's it I just want to monetize and that's that nah I'm not I'm not here for it so I refuse like screening you've learned the hard way yeah screen before you jump on any podcast yeah and i feel like even if a normal person was to watch that they're not going to look at me and think what do you get what i mean like a normal average person but her cult following they will come attack you because they don't understand they they're such bigots do you get what i mean like they're Mm. not looking to listen or change perspective they're looking to just cuss and troll Yeah, yeah yeah and it's just like um because even like i'm sure there's some wisdom and she's probably spat some truth in her time like i'm sure i've not sat down no, all her stuff no i have no idea no when i say and it, i think it's really sad because obviously uh, this is the problem like like just say if you're of mm. a s- certain race and you want to bash your own race you get away with it if mm. you're of a certain gender and you want to bash your own gender you'll get away with it do you get what i mean mm. a lot more than a man would mm. so what she says about women is outrageously disgusting and it's not even that it's like you fine you want to make money mm. but think about how much damage you're making to society just so oh, you can you make can. money Da, 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 da. Even I know that song. <laughs> don't worry, we're old school. <laughs> oh wait, how old are you? Oh no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. How how old do you think Aladdin is? We have two guesses. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, don't give her no insight. Twenty-three. Are you twenty-two? he reminds me of how old i am every day oh wow no just by your existence oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah i'm just like on oh, my days i'm but a young girl it's a young thing age ain't nothing but a number that's a you know what's crazy sense. Is me at this age i feel like 22 is so young isn't it mad but when i was 22 and people used to be like hey. i thought i was a big man <laughs> all my days i was like what 22 say something <laughs> Sorry, you're not no, big man. So was, but definitely. do you know what? There's something about aging that we just think we're racing to get old. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, can't wait till I'm 16. Come 16. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you're too young, man. Yeah. They're like, can't wait till I'm 18. Yeah. Get my driving license. Everyone's official. Yeah, you're too young to enter certain places. You've got to be 21 plus. Yeah. Can't wait till I'm 21. Now I'm just like, nah, slow down, baby. Slow yeah. down. <laughs> we ain't ready. And it's crazy because having kids as well, it just makes you really feel like... It's like, a very humbling situation. It is. Because people are like, yeah, okay, see your age, got a child. Mm -hmm." And they're like, oh, yeah, based on how old your child is. I'm like, I could have been 12 producing him. Don't assume. I mean. That's how much I'm trying to fight my age. But anyways. um, So obviously you've been on a podcast that you weren't very happy with. And I guess overall it's been a learning experience for you. Yeah. Um, That's why when I sat and spoke to you, I felt it was important. Like prior to us having this conversation, I really wanted to show the other side of you 
where people can actually deep you from a human perspective and not just from like an entertainment perspective. I think yeah. everyone has banter and everyone has the ability to like just be a vibe, but it's nice to even just unwrap that a little bit. And that's why we heal. Amazing. So, word on the curb, dating. Would you ever do, obviously word on the curb ain't a way to find a Muslim man as such. Would you ever do online dating or have you done online dating? I've had really bad experiences. So is that yes, we have? Yeah, I have, and I never again. I don't know. Nah, I don't think. Listen, I found my husband. Yeah. On a mismatch. Yeah. Oh, muz. Yeah. I swear it's real. Yeah. No. No. I swear. No. Where do you think you'll find your act? Uh, do you know what it is? It's, I'm in a very difficult situation. Fair enough. So I just I feel like I'm trying to I'm making sure I know myself first mm. because I feel like especially when you're in a relationship. You need to be who you want to be and who you're happy being because I feel like sometimes when you become, you go into a relationship, it stunts your growth there. Mm. And when I say growth, not in a disrespectful way, no, no, no. but mm. you should be content that if you don't do anything else, you're happy. Do you get mm. what I mean? Like, because once you have children, once you, your life changes drastically. Mm. And I think motherhood has definitely humbled me because I realized that not that being a mum has stopped me, it's made me who I am because I would mm. never have done things online if I wasn't a mum. Do you get what I mean? Because I feel like Give I'm a Give me a bit more... of courage. Yeah, no, I'm a lot more comfortable now. Now yeah, I really yeah. don't care. Like, it's not about... Burn your views, guys. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? It's yeah. about impressing people, whatever. I'm a whole mum. I, I get that, though. Yeah, like, like, I'm here to impress my kid. That's mm. it. I don't really care about no one else. As long as my daughter loves me and is happy with me. Mm. You know, and it's given me, like... I think culturally as well, it's stopped... It's put a lot of, like... It's stopped a lot of comments coming my way. They can't say nothing to you. Nah, because so it's like, well, I've she's married, married. And yeah, exactly. I've been there, done that. Now yeah, what? Yeah. Whereas before that, it's like, who's going to marry you? Do you get what I mean? If you're on I there hate, online. I hate dude, that. I hate that. Yeah, it's, it's so... Just like, but it's true, though, because like I've met guys along the way and they're like, Hebs, you know, I love what you're doing with a pod, you know. I love what you're doing mm. with Tricky when you guys went into the school and did whatever. I love the way you're raising your son. Da, 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 da. But you're, you're bait, in it? And I'm like, bait how, though, sir? Yeah. Bait how? In yeah. the best possible way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're chilling on band them on a podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. man them who I can have articulate conversations with yeah, yeah I'm not here like yeah. popping bottles in some club or some random yeah, man yeah, them yeah, or yeah, someone yeah. see me wine or some next guy yeah. I beg you relax yeah you're so insecure yeah it hurts yeah um but I think like personally or to be fair you and I spoke what you just said now about being a person that you want to be and I'm gonna read this quote out and it really resonated with our conversation that we had. I was driving from one place to the other. I'm like, hi, wife, you right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. literally yeah. And it says, to attract better, you have to become better. Yeah. You can't do the same thing and expect change. Transformation, transform your mindset, upgrade your habits. Yeah. And do you feel like that's where you're at right now? Yeah. And I feel like I've still got, like, I used to hate being alone. Mm. And I feel like that reflected in my relationship. Okay. Whereas now I'm getting comfortable being alone. What's made it happen? Your motherhood? Well, yeah, motherhood has <laughs> forced me to be alone. Like, because mm. obviously without childcare, you can't do anything. Mm. So the idea of like having to, not that I was even out, because I never used to go clubbing or out or be out on the streets like that. Mm. I used to go out with my friends, cinema, food, cinema, food. Like, yeah, yeah, had that to was always motives, have motives. motives. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't like, you know, out. Yeah. It was just like, you know, vibing with your friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I became, when I became mum, I was just like, whoa, this is, Crazy. It's a lot. Yeah. Because I can't take my child out everywhere, this and that. No. But then it's like um, COVID hit and I was so grateful because my friends understood the pain <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was stuck at home. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but just being forced to be by myself really changed me. No. And I think I'm a lot better because now if I was in a relationship relationship, I wouldn't be as like, where are we going? What are we do next? Where are we like yeah, motives yeah. or holidays or constant. Do you get what I mean? No, I hear you. And do you feel like having friends that don't have children is a it's big issue? You should recruit some no, friends of kids, you know. Just you meet them at the school That's gates and like, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Come yeah, later, yeah? yeah, yeah. But you know, well, we've got school runs that consider. It's difficult. No, really? Why? Because I feel like the demographic. Are they all white? They're all like mature women. Oh, just older? Yeah, mature women that have planned their children for years. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, when you know exactly when, what, and you've budgeted and you're just comfortable. Yeah. Like, yeah, they yeah. don't have, so I could not speak to them and try and relate to them in life because... You'd be surprised. 
No. Good no, Karen I've tried. Listen, I went to the mum's club. I found one of my best friends from the mum's club. There we go. Like she's, yeah, she's one of my bestest friends. And it's like, you know, our children love each other. She's got a daughter as well. But th- she went for the same reason. Because she wanted to find a mother friend who's yeah, similar. Yeah. It's hard. Because everyone's out there. Like all your friends that don't have children. They can understand, but they don't understand. They don't understand. Yeah, not yeah, like yeah. that. And obviously some people can relate. Because even if they have pets or whatever, like you know respect to pets and stuff because it's hard having a ah, pet. do you know i've had it where people go yeah 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 do you know what i also have a child <laughs> he's seven months my dog is so lovely and i'm just like ah do not compare my child to your dog but do you know what do you know what i was i was babysitting ba- dog sitting my nephew's dog mm-hmm. for a very short period and i thought it's difficult and plus i don't have this motherly nurturing in me it's really forced. My daughter forces it. Do you get what I mean? That's interesting. Like, I f- yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm not maternal like that. So you don't feel like you've become maternal since becoming a mother? Do you know what it is? It's, yeah, like, but I'm not like, when I, you know how some people, when they see their dogs or their pets. Don't be, don't be comparing no, your no, pets no, no. to, no, listen, like, you know, I will. But this is what I'm saying. You know how when people see dogs and they're like, oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my God, I love him. Like, I could never do, I, I don't even do it to children like that. Yeah, for me to do it to animals do you get what I mean like some people are very so maternal that even with their pets they're like so like let me get socks for my dogs and stuff and I'm yeah, like that's dead. I don't even try put socks on my kids sometimes yeah, <laughs> like child you, you don't temperatures all right what are you saying you're good yeah yeah like just <laughs> only five minute yeah, walk yeah, child like, services will be on your case girl <laughs> put do you get socks what I mean? with put your socks odd socks my... vibes <laughs> speaking of socks yeah. you're doing odd socks yeah is it back yeah. Well, it should be back, yeah, hopefully. You excited? Yeah, yeah. Because you know what? When we started off, I never really understood the concept of, like, reacting to music. So, <laughs> And I don't listen to music, so it's a bit weird. And I'm just like, we're like two aunties reacting to, like, the latest sensual scene. <laughs> so tell, like, tell me your age. If I tell you your age, we're two aunties. <laughs> we're, I'm telling you, like, we just need to, like, wrap our heads or something. Because like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we need to proper show the aunties. But people get it. People like it. No, I and I you. think also, I, I'm kind of blessed in the sense that people don't know my age so they think i'm a lot younger so i get away with a lot of things i hear you i hear you like when you mentioned that people really can't tell where you're from before i wore my scarf people had no idea yeah. i'm muslim yeah so that's all i kind of appreciate that because we'd have certain conversations and be like, oh, i really like you know your way of thinking da, da, da. i'm like well i'm muslim yeah, 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 <laughs> you, yeah. you might want to look it's into that yeah, exactly. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's resonates. the best way to do that one do you get what yeah. i mean it's through your actions yeah, yeah, yeah and i feel like people forget that people think oh you know, you need to wear a scarf, pray five times a day, and it's and then you can be like arrogant or cuss people out, and you know, it's like no, it's your actions that make people convert. I think you and I, like one of the things we hit off, like re really hit off, was the fact that we spoke very similar about like, you know, how people judge because you don't wear a scarf. Yeah. Even though I'm wearing a scarf, do you know it's so hilarious. People think a man made me wear a scarf. Okay. They're like, oh, who is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, trust me, the last person I wear it for. Please, I know the backlash Ooh. is going to come through and the haram please is going to kick off. I'll never work for a man. No, I'll you never. Shouldn't. You shouldn't like, have to. I get it if a man influences you or inspires you, but for me to, like, a, a T's and C's, I will not marry to you cover. Brethren, stop wearing them short shorts, in it. Yeah. No, but they forget that. They forget that there's, there's, there's certain requirements they can't do, but yeah, they get yeah. away with it. It's They'll be showing their top, different. navel, everything, and it's just like, oh yeah, then then they're not doing much. You know what? I'm gonna go under people's under people's posts and go, stuff for Allah, brother, <laughs> cover, brother, what is? <laughs> Listen, once they hit the gym one two times and they got the six pack for the, the arms, gas. everything showing muscle memory. Yeah, isn't that? forget what? the fitness of the world. They're showing it. Did you get what I mean? It's all good, man. But no, I feel like um, people do judge me because they think that oh, outwardly I'm not showing that I'm Muslim, or whatever, but they don't realize that. Listen, when I was 16, I was going to fully wear a niqab. Listen, I I was poof, mind blown. Yeah. You used to wear hijab. I used to wear hijab. I used to wear a baya. I used to even want to wear a niqab. Fam, I and swear I'm... to God. I never <laughs> in my wildest dreams. When you told me, I'm like, I looked at my phone and like, is this the same person? Yeah, 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 swear. yeah. And I used to like, I used to proper like, when I say I, de- I go deep into religion and mm. even just, I like history because I feel like religion is history. Do you get mm. what I mean? Like you study it, you learn from people and it's all about stories about the past. And um, so, yeah, I went deep into it and I, I like I like listen to like reading hadiths and stories and, you know, but then um, I was about 19 and I think this was just before. Uh, this was during like the terrorist attacks were happening as well. Yeah, yeah. People attacking me when I was wearing a scarf. Swear. They make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. What's the wildest thing that's happened to you? 
well, it's more happened to my sisters than me. Like some people have tried pulling off their scarves. That's but it. this was when it first started. You get what I That's mean? That's what happened when something when something kicks off in the yeah. media. But the first week is so raw. So, and I was, I think, twelve when the um, eleven the bom- bus bombs happened. Yeah, yeah, that, that was Ju- that was July, July something. Something. I was in like I think yeah seven or yeah eight, yeah, and yeah. I was leaving school, and I was only like twelve or something. And a girl, a woman, a a woman literally goes to me, "I'll go back to your country. Like, why are you here?" Yeah, it's mad. And, and it just, just like, brings out the ignorance. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. People just exactly. go wild, like you know, this is my moment to shine. Yeah, Something exactly. popped off. Yeah, I hate yeah. you. Yeah. Like, mm, no. Yeah. I mean, if you go back to your country, you're like, yeah, but this is my country. Exactly. Like, this is exactly, all I know. Yeah. Y'all, y'all messed up yeah. my country. <laughs> no, it's, but also, it's it's. It, I hate it when people pick and choose. Yeah. You can't pick and choose when we're British and when we're not. If yeah. it's either we're British, British, or we're not. Even the fact that we have to tick, like, I get it, because culturally, you need to show that you might be different. Mm. But me ticking Bangladeshi on a piece of paper doesn't show my culture because I can be very British. So why do you need to know that I'm Bangladeshi? Do you get why? Are I mean? you proud to be a Bengali? Do you know what it is? It's not even that I'm not. Is the reason we have to tick these boxes is the race element. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. to show that we're ethnic minority. To them, obviously, the purpose of it, from my understanding, is just to get an idea of how many people are applying or how many people are whatever, and they get an idea of the the backgrounds that are applying the percentages and the ratios. But so that's for research because purposes. no. But this is what I'm saying. It's mm. because of race. Because if mm. we take race aside, if I could go to a all white corporation and act like them and speak like them. My culture doesn't have to show. Do you get yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So you take your me skin on, tone and your features. It's my skin it tone and my features, and that's what you need to show in your business plan that you've got people of other ethnicities. Yeah, yeah. To and that's box. only because my race and my hair, yeah, my, yeah. my complexion. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So when people say like, uh, the reason I obviously I can identify with both cultures is because I'm equally invested in both cultures. So True. when I'm here on this, yeah, I might be showing skin and I might be wearing trousers on the top. When I go home, I'm wearing full shell kameez. <laughs> like I did not go to my mum's house like this. Yeah, I could awesome. not. Walk, <laughs> not. I would not. Walk, I would be so embarrassed even if I walked in front of my brothers. Mm. Like in front of my brothers, it's not that I wear a scarf, but I wear. Uh, I'll have You'll be a scarf mindful my what neck. you're wearing. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's that's from a cultural perspective as opposed to faith, because I think people get faith yeah, yeah, yeah. and culture that's very much. Culture, yeah. So you can like obviously because some will say, "Oh, are you why are you fearing them and not Allah?" No, no, and it's, it's just culture. Like, it's culture. It's just to respect the household and the respect yeah. their beliefs and their their views on culture. Mm. And even like for example, in in Islamic terms, we can dress like this in front of our brothers. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. they're our mahrams, we don't have to wear yeah, a yeah, scarf yeah. and stuff. But culturally you yeah. don't wear a hijab in front of your brother that's it like, that's wild see yeah. in our culture it's not even like yeah that. it's not exactly no. I'm, now that i've had more arab friends i'm like whoa what you can wear pajamas at home I swear that's we so have to wear long dresses that's and so even then have a scarf on our neck really yeah but that's because my family like i said i'm one of 14 so my Jeez! <laughs> you didn't like i said when did you drop this in this I conversation mean, every time i go on i'm like you i'm one in 14 i'm surprised that's not gone viral yet girl but, uh, no yeah. i mean it's fairly not normal like ethnic minorities there are like but they're There's usually big families but yeah. like a good few but yeah your, your dad did polygamy in it that's a whole yeah, different yeah, conversation yeah, yeah so i had two moms well even my mum alone had nine children Okay. So they're still yeah, quite, active. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, being a mother, active <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very. It's a hands on job, I guess. Um, but no, like, uh, <laughs> my, um, culturally, obviously, I'm very different. And I feel like the only reason I should be able to say I'm from my culture, mm. especially back home, is if I'm invested. Okay. If I don't speak my language and I don't eat my food and I don't wear my outfit, why am I claiming my heritage or my... Because it's in your bloodline. That's no, why. but this is what I'm saying. Is it really? It just... It's my features and my genetics. But, but your I genetics are so important. Because your genetics... Because depending of racism. Where you're, not just, no. Race aside. What? Yeah, go on. Medically, there's certain things that are more prone or more whatever coming from certain backgrounds. That. So you can't... Not deny, but you can't... Like, when people deny where they're from, they go, I am British. I am from London. I'm like, where are you originally from? Oh, my parents. I'll jab you in the throat. If you ever do that, I'll jab you in the no, throat. No, no, no. I'll jab <laughs> you in the throat, Aladdin. 100%. No, but the reason I hear that, I hear, I respect that because rightfully, our genetics are different. We're more mm. prone to certain things. But obviously, even adopting a different culture and lifestyle, you're less likely to be prone to certain things back home. Do you get what I mean? So if yeah, I'm born and raised, like my daughter, Maya, mm. right? Um, shout out to Maya. <laughs> shout out to Maya. If I don't make her eat curry and all of that, her cholesterol's high because we eat curry. Do you mm. get what I mean? If we take that but aside... There's other, but there's other stuff that just by default, genetically by default, built. But even yeah. then, it's 
it could apply to anyone. Do you get what I mean? Okay. So it's not just selective to that race. It could apply to other races as well. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But obviously, when we when we tick boxes, like medically, I mm. get it why you should say your heritage. But it's not even heritage. It's your family history. Yeah, yeah. It's your health history. You yeah. don't need to put. But race there are in that. certain things like black bone marrow transplants and stuff like that where it's known like amongst like the black community and it, like specifically from certain countries so it's just based on research so sometimes no, if you completely deny and you're like moving like you're just you're just british like and you don't want to sort of be mindful you're moving around ignorantly and almost denying and almost there's a level of self-hate i personally believe if you don't own your race and don't own your heritage then there's something to me suspect because i would just say why is it you like you look at your skin and don't go do you know what i'm loving where i'm from i might not know much about my culture because i weren't raised it my parents didn't teach me about it but i know i'm different because i'm going to be treated differently in a beautiful way and in a most horrid way do you know yeah, what i mean and, but that's my point my point is if racism didn't mm. exist mm. or even just identifying people with groups or what they look like if we were to take that aside when you're for example okay let me switch it like this if i was born in south africa mm -hmm. and i was born and raised in south africa yeah and my mum was born and raised in south africa and my mum's mum was yeah. but their family came from bangladesh but we're three generations deep people in south africa they say they're south african that's cool i respect that however it's because somewhere along the line no they haven't mixed just saying no no no, no. somewhere along the lines or along the way their family stopped teaching them about their background and they started embracing like it's like my son going well i'm just beige i'm just british yeah. nah bro you are this no. this this and this and you're gonna love every but one this of is it, what it. i'm saying so when i say if you're not associated to the culture you can't really say you identify with the culture do you get what i mean but you don't think you should want to reach out and learn even if no, your mum didn't teach you you, about you can it. try you can try but let, let's say even my daughter now I can, I'm, because I'm invested in my culture, I can teach her my food. I can, but what's going to happen is slowly, however influence much I have, she's going to have influence of her surroundings. Mm. Even like me, I cook African food at home. Mm. My daughter listens to Afrobeats more than she does Asian. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but you have more of a culture than we do. I was going to say, because we don't have much of a music culture in the UK, which is why I grew up listening to like Afrobeats and like R&B hip hop. Yeah, I was yeah, a hip hop yeah. head growing up because there wasn't, Arabic music weren't popping nowhere. nowhere <laughs> like, I don't but, even but know where it is. This is what I'm saying is slowly, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's going to bring up her children and it's going to have less of our cultures and it might even become more just say British culture. She might even just have like told in a hole for dinner. Like I would never make a told in a hole. Bits. <laughs> but no, but. Let's <laughs> not even tell her about it. Don't but let even Google that. No, no, but this is what I'm saying. Like, just say, just say yeah, by yeah, chance, yeah. Yeah. her children, like just say one of her children mar marries a white man, yeah, yeah, yeah. an English white man. And m m that grandchild of mine adopts that English white yeah. lifestyle. Her child is not going to know anything of the previous cultures. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> I think there's a lot of responsibility as parents. No, we to, can, to, but to what I'm saying that. is if we don't have I get that, it gets watered down it gets a bit watered down. by generation through generation so, and generation. Yeah. I so get the that. only reason she's going to now claim her grand great-grandmother being Bangladeshi, which is not going to show physically. Yeah. She's not going to ever have to show physically. She won't have that. Mm. Why should she claim now Bangladesh? The only reason is because if she looks different right mm. because if she doesn't people won't even question people it. will be like oh, so, so where are you from you look yeah. you look you don't look like you look you, you look, look exotic yeah yeah, yeah. You look exotic. <laughs> it's like you look, okay you you're Just racist like, like like when i was working at my brother's restaurant and the, the the obviously like i'm brought up here right yeah now he asked me what team do i support i said man united he was like well you live in london why are you support man united you know you did it for growing did it for arsenal <laughs> Hater. So, so he was just like, oh, why do you support Man United when you grew up in London? And I was like, well, my family are originally from up north. So who's this person asking this question? This this is a white man in my brother's Indian restaurant. White man? White man knows that everyone in London supports, supports the whole should, of the UK. Because people have this idea that you should support your local team, okay? But, eh. but there's more local teams than Arsenal, Tottenham in London. Do you get what I mean? There's so many little Fulham. small teams. <laughs> small teams that people are Never. supporting so anyway he was just like oh you know why don't you support your local team i said well my family were brought originally from up north so when my and he looks at me funny like yeah, yeah and yeah. i was like well when my dad first migrated here in the 40s and this is me showing my dad's age because my dad was born in 1930 jeez so yeah my dad was came to the uk mm. in the late 40s mm -hmm. early 50s so he was one of the first migrants here yeah, yeah now yeah. when my dad first came here 
naturally they all went up north. So he was in Leeds. Yeah. So my dad spoke with a bit of a Leeds accent. He didn't speak much English, but when he did, he'll say bus. Do you get what I mean? Like, so um, I was like, oh, my dad first, you know, when he first migrated, he, uh, mm. he started off in Leeds. And then he goes, oh, I was going to say, you don't look like your family originated from up north. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, listen, <laughs> I, I call them Karens. I know, not, okay, disclaimer, not all white people are Karens, but I just, it's long to give them different names depending on their class. So we're going to call them all Karens for the sake of conversation. It's interesting when they throw comments like, oh, you speak really good English for someone who's foreign. I'm like, born and raised in London, journalism degree, yellow. And it's just like, just born and raised in London default. Like, why is it not good enough for you? Yeah. But I do say freshy stuff because I was raised yeah. by two freshy parents. Yeah. Yeah. Very freshy parents that yeah. only to this day I'm realising certain things aren't pronounced a certain yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, so the whole time I've been saying this. Yeah. The yeah. biggest one. And mummy say, Heba passed me the standstill plate. I'm like, what? Standstill. All right, cool. Here you go. I kind of knew what it was. One day we were in Ikea. She went, oh, Heba, look, the standstill. I went, no, mum, it's stainless steel. She went, yes, yeah, standstill. I'm like, ah. So you're trying to say for the last 20 years, I've been saying standstill. But what you meant was stainless steel. Say no more. Safe. I don't have a connection. I just thought this is, she's, she's an adult <laughs> teaching me how to speak. Do you know what? The only way I can relate to that is when I was growing up, Mm. there was taboo topics we never spoke about and mm. one of them was ganja <laughs> right so every time my mum used to pass a certain like part because I grew up in Upper Clapton yeah oh, geez, Hackney so obviously we had boys smoking in every corner yeah, so yeah. every time my family used to walk past my mum or my sisters they'd be like smells of ganja here ganja ganja so I kind of clocked that smell is ganja right yeah. and then as we went to uh, school um, I learned about drugs a little bit. Mm, mm, mm. So I was, um, I think I was like in year six, year seven. And um, I'm going past a group of gangs, like gang boys now. And I'm with my cousin and I'm in my language saying, oh my God, it smells like so much ganja here. Yeah. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? No, you don't understand. I didn't know that ganja was a universal term. Oh, snap. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, because I You just said it amongst them, like, yeah, I can smell hella weed right here. <laughs> I'm the, and imagine, like, a little 11 year old, like, a neat He's like, he's like, what are you saying? You want, you want, you want to come in the situation? <laughs> what are you saying? I've got half a spoon. <laughs> babe, listen. Did they look at you? Of, babe, I could have got beaten up. Really? I could have, listen. I, I don't know. Got beaten up. Is it like me? I'm sure I could have got beaten up. But all That's I'm right. saying is, I didn't know ganja was universal terms. So obviously, you know, I'm here thinking it's a Bengali excuse of Bengali terms. It's cool, so it's but, so sad. It's like, yeah, no, but coming even back to like culturally, mm. I do think it's our responsibility to definitely teach our children. 100%. Because if we're going to claim we're from a different culture, yeah, we yeah. need to know our culture. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I don't claim, if I don't know nothing, don't put importance on me to have to say I'm from a different culture. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But if I am, because obviously when you take on people from different cultures, you have to respect their cultural views in a workplace. 100%. And that's mindfulness. When, yeah. yeah, and that's when I'll say that you should like if I say I'm Bangladeshi, it's because I definitely know I've got cultural different clashes. Do you get what I mean? I've got cultural issues that will come up even in the workplace. Um, even like just say my, if someone passes away Islamically, mm. we bury them the next day. Know that if I say I'm going to the funeral the next day, it's because it's part of my faith. Mm. Don't be hard on me trying to give me a day off. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, 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 like yeah. there's certain things that I definitely think. Um, but I think it's definitely important for us to teach our children. And I think more that I became when I became a mom. I said, yeah, my kid's learning Bengali. My kid's 100%, understanding 100%. everything. Like, she's going to have to cook curry. <laughs> she's going to have to eat curry every day. But I don't do that today. But when she's older, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I want to yeah. be that mum that... We've got to start Bengali. now, though. I'm not going to lie to you, sis. Yeah, 100%. Like, no, we've started already. Put, yeah. But, you know, even coming back Not to as that, in cooking, but, like, the no, language. No, that's child labour. Don't do language. that. But, look, my daughter's half Arab. Mm. What can I teach her that's half Arab, please? <laughs> if she, um, if she... <laughs> Yeah, really? Im -shi -im -shi like, did, did you get what I mean? Like, so obviously, you know, it's hard because where I feel like mother's tongue, why they say it's mother's tongue, it's because it's always the mums that teach their first language as native. Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And because where her dad speaks Arabic, how, bro, yeah, like, do you want to learn Arabic? Do you want to learn Arabic? <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 even for Islamic purposes, I, w I wish I was fluent in Arabic. You learn to teach and I have to say, like, yeah. you know, I'm at home and I'm a <laughs> And a fill bait, yeah. And a fill, yeah. Is it a fill? Oh. I was, so I was sitting on my husband and I was like explaining to him, oh, this is how you say this masculine, feminine. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. I went, but then you can say it in this way, in dial, in this dialect, yeah, and yeah, say it this yeah. dialect. I went, hold on, hold on. I, 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 I said, mum, is it this way, that way? She went, yeah, but you can also say it. I'm like, no, nah, this is long. 
it's long. Even as long. an Arabic speaker, long. I speak yeah. fluently Arabic. So others will say maybe I'm not fluent when I yeah. want to go back home. They're yeah. like, nah, it's cute. You foreign girl. Yeah. You ain't from here. And I'm like, but I speak, read, and write Arabic. So say something. Do you get what I mean? But it's, it's, I mean, it's I, so I, intricate. I read, I read and write Arabic, but I can't speak it. <laughs> Serious. And I can't understand Do you know it, what? There's a lot of there's a lot of Muslim people. Like yeah. my husband included. He's from Sierra Leone, and he can write Arabic. Yeah. He can read the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. everything else, yeah, is completely like that's that's all they were taught. Yeah. So he, I'm teaching him, and he's teaching himself at the yeah. moment Arabic, and he's just like it's just a whole new world. Yeah. Because even even when we went to masjid when we were growing up, it mm. was just to read and write. Yeah, yeah, Arabic. Yeah. It wasn't ever to understand, and I think that's why it's sad. Yeah. Like, like I took my time to read the English translation Quran, of the yeah. Quran because I thought there's no point in me reading Arabic that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really important to really, do you get what I mean? Digress in that if you're gonna go into faith. No, I do. But like, uh, but Proper, do you know what? I think but you're still one step ahead though. The fact that yeah. you're able to learn and understand it is yeah. still, or well, you're yeah, now 100%. understanding it. But even that, my daughter goes Arabic club now because I said, listen. Does she? W- Wait, bring yeah. her in. Where? Because if my mother-in-law says something, I need to know what she's saying. Now. Like, <laughs> listen, you're going to be my little ears and eyes. Yeah, just tell me what what's mean? up. No, I joke with my mother-in-law as well. And I'm like, yeah, you better teach her because I need to know what you're saying. So Just to teach her a few couple bad words and be like, oh, no, someone told me it's beautiful. <laughs> like, just go let her cuss my mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you touched on a few things, which is basically like, the you know your daughter embracing different cultures and you having to embrace different cultures and i think there's nothing wrong with that that's not i don't see it as a sellout or you trying to be like when people go oh well i've had people in my dms or not in my dms in my, under my comment section probably like three times in the whole since 2012 where someone said why are you trying to be black and i said ah what's being black because i'm sure other black people won't be happy with that comment because what is it being called black yeah but i think what people forget because we're second generation here, sometimes third generation, and we've integrated with so many different minorities, we have now become our own yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, there's a culture, So, yeah. like, you have, like, Caribbean people with little, you know, little African comments in their conversation. You have Moroccans who vibe with whoever. Like, we're all, like, literally Listen. integrating, and we're creating our own dialect. Yeah, 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 dialect, yeah, 100%. Dialogue, them yeah. ones combined. Yeah. 100%. Um, Listen, I went through different phases in my life. Like, at one point, I was Latina. <laughs> Hey, mommy. At one point, <laughs> I, I was see fully you. Nigerian. At one point, like, like dance hall, do you get what I mean? Like, everyone knows dance hall. Everyone's like, you know, you have a little bit of influence. But that's all we way. have, though, because you're being raised amongst. Yeah. And when we when we come into this country, like, when my parents came to the country, what they did is they held on to their own culture. Yeah. They didn't want to integrate with any other culture. Yeah. Any other culture they were, they were, like, alien to. Yeah. So even me getting married to someone at my race, they freaked out. Not because yeah. they don't like the culture. They don't know it because yeah, yeah, they never yeah, allowed yeah. themselves to yeah. integrate. From an Islamic perspective, there's nothing they could really yeah. say. But it's just like we've they've put us in this country and they freak out when we're mixing. But then actually we identify. Like I identify with you. There's certain things I won't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, when yeah. you tell me you got to go home and get yeah. dressed and yeah, 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 yeah. I don't get it. How maybe you greet your parents. Yeah. Better how I greet your parents yeah. would be different. Yeah. Same with someone who's Nigerian, yeah. Nigerian, Ghanaian, Sierra Leone, whatever. Yeah. We're all very different but we yeah. connect in something it's very yeah and the more we speak about how similar we are the more our cultures will combine do you that's get what it. I mean because African and Asian culture are very similar like whenever I go to my friend's house Nigerian aunties like the same way I treat my own aunties you call them. everyone auntie yeah. you call everyone mum it's, exactly. it's just respect exactly. it's all basic respect. Yeah, but yeah. even like the Caribbean culture it's a mixture of cultures do you get what I mean and that's mm. been like just say f- about 400 years the Caribbean culture even probably less than that because mm. by the time the people started mixing properly and had influence it was probably a lot later that's a culture of Asia and Africa be- c- coming Combined. together yeah, yeah, yeah. it's obvious and yeah, like yeah. even coming back to like ethnicity what I was saying People don't say, like the Caribbean people don't say that I'm so-and-so from Africa or I'm so-and-so from Asia. They will say I'm from the Caribbean because that culture is different to what the ancestors were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if you're Asian Caribbean or Black Caribbean, you'll still say I'm just Caribbean. Yeah, but I think with the Caribbean, it's a bit more t- it's, it's a bit more different than everything else because the Caribbean is attached to slavery, it's attached to a lot of movement. Yeah, and, exactly. And unfortunately, there's a lot of heritage and... and background that's history that's lost not amongst it so they can only identify to what they yeah. were moved into and yeah. had to accept yeah so i think in that sense it is like uh, some people do like later on they reach out and they'll so i've had like some Ghanaian friends of mine who'll be like listen so like to, to like one of my caribbean friends like you're you're originally Ghanaian, you know i can see yeah, it yeah, i can yeah, see yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just like later on they can do the test and they can identify yeah 100 no, and it's, it's interesting but i think for them identity is very different than how like us coming through generation generation because we have we can trace our history yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like going to americans and 
when they say, oh, I'm just, I'm just black American. I'm like, but are you African American? Yeah. They're like, African American is just, just any, all American, all black Americans are African Americans, but they can't say like, I'm from this country, I'm from this city because it's just when wiped. But that's exactly why. So I we're like privileged. We can, no, we can, 100%. do you know what I mean? So let's hold on to that. As but opposed even, to even that, like America is a perfect example, a prime example of how race plays a big part in it. Cause you don't hear, white americans ever saying i'm european american <laughs> no. they came there exactly the same time they've been there on that same land yeah but it's a like privilege entitlement 100 percent. and mm. it's like the fact that america doesn't exist to them why is it that we don't force them to say i'm spanish american mm. why is it that the ethnic minorities in america still have to claim i'm so and so do you get what i mean mm, 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 why mm. is it that we can't all like for example and that's my point when it comes to racism included into the whole ethnicity American culture is American culture. Mm -hmm. But why is it that they have to identify as I'm black American and I'm the well, white Americans don't say I'm European American? In that sense, I understand. Like, obviously, I think because of white are predominant there, they've kind of, they ran the situation. But, it, yeah. Someone, but as far as the culture, it varies from state to state. So yeah. I guess it, and I, but and I ain't in America, so I don't no. want to go deep into no, it. No, exactly. But even like when it comes to like, just say culture, mm. black culture or American culture, just say, is very different to Caribbean culture, which is different to African culture. Do you 100%. get what I mean? 100%. And I feel like it's a, the reason why I'll say like associating to culture is important is because someone from the Caribbean is not going to face the same struggles as someone from Africa yeah. in a, in UK. Do you get no, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, we need to understand that the cultures are different. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't, like, race isn't like a major part in, as in it shouldn't be. Race mm -hmm. isn't the reason why you should be able to, uh, you should have to say, I'm from that culture. It's because you need to make um, sort of uh, adjustments. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. the reason why we should be able to have to say our heritage. No. Not because of what we look like. No, I agree with you. But I think, for me, for some reason, I've always just been proud. I'll be like, no, but you look Bengali. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> I, I, do you know? I've had, I've had every single this is race. What I'm saying. I've had as far yeah. as Eritrean. I'm like, baby girl, don't <laughs> beg it. Like, I'm not even trying to beg it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. it's because you can look like you're from a million places, and and it's just amazing. Like, people don't believe I'm from Sudan and Egypt. No, they're no, like, no, yeah. they're like Egypt. I can see Sudan, and then when they see like my lower half, they're like, ah, Sudanese. I can see it, and I'm like, nah, that's from the Egyptian yeah. side actually. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But for me, I think yeah culture is a big deal i think also like being mindful of when you when you have children who you're having children with how much you can't part-time choose what you want to adapt to the culture you got to raise them correct knowing their heritage so they yeah. never go i don't know it bothers me so much but don't say you're british and that's it like to me i can't no, do 100%, it I can't I don't, do it. no but i feel like also if you do say you're other your cop you're another culture make sure you try your best to um understand your culture do you get what i mean because i feel like it's also a disservice for like say if someone was very involved in their british side mm. didn't show any side of their bangladeshi culture mm. for them to then sit and if they didn't have my life as well for example when i say my life i'm a first generation bangladeshi yeah there's people that are fourth generation bangladeshi here and they won't have the same struggles as i because their family would have been so much more established mm. so when and when they and the more established you are i feel like the more you are on the british side do you get what I mean? I'm not going to agree with you. And okay. only, only because I feel like because they're fourth generation. Actually, wait, because they're because they've been here longer. They've they faced more harsher racism. No. So you walked yeah. in in a more privileged situation. No, no, but no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying where they the more established you get in a country, mm. the more you adopt that country's lifestyle. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. So whether they're fourth generation or one generation, yeah, the yeah. more adjusted they are. Because, for example, I've had friends that have come from Afghanistan at the age of 10 mm. and they know more TV shows, more Western culture than I do. I Listen, I didn't grow up watching Friends. I didn't grow up watching any TV shows. I don't know music. <laughs> but I think that's from household to household. Though. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So because where I'm so invested in my Bengali culture, mm. there's I've got peers that are my age. I've, my dad was 65 when he had me. So, my, so can you imagine my household was so May rest different. in peace, but my days, and your, your, your yeah. dad is so <laughs> And then I've got friends or I've got Bengali people in my age that their mum is like maybe 10 years old, uh, 20 years older than them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. And that's like my the sister's age. age. Completely different, so it's a complete yeah. different. And their mum is so much more modern or updated with lifestyle or how UK works mm. that they haven't had to face what I've gone through. So now when a white person meets them oh, and went, says, white 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 person, person, white meets person. them and says, oh, I've got a Bangladeshi friend yeah. and she does this and she's allowed this and she's allowed that. And they can't understand that. They might be Bengali, mm. but they don't face the same cultural situations that I'm in. All right, so 
do you feel proud or not proud are you glad that you were raised where you were raised 100,000 percent for all the struggles I'm, yeah because I feel like I'm a mixture of both yeah and I feel like I'm such an amazing mixture of both like well, what, I can what switch would you, it up but what would you change about like now that you're raising your daughter what would you change or do differently based on what you were exposed to in your home I'll take away the negative stuff of my culture what's negative like having to stick in an abusive marriage okay or not having to be able to leave because of domestic violence or whatever, like, or men feeling like, because there are, I think in Asian culture, there is still quite a, like, misogyn- misogynistic, I can't even say See, I don't word. say the words because I, I can't say yeah, it. I so you, you put yourself out there <laughs> yeah, to like, say it. Yeah, like, I feel it. like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel um, like there's still quite a lot of, like, there's still a patriarchal society yeah, 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 that yeah. isn't Islamic. And yeah. I think that's what I don't like because people like to say, Asian people are Muslim or, you know, and that's... Culture a, and faith are very two different. different things. Very different. Like, even, like, just say Pakistani culture, yeah. they have this, like, honour killing. It's not so much in Bengali culture, but it's more in Pakistani culture. And people would, like, associate that to Islam. But it's like, no, it's a culture. It's not for religion. You don't kill your sister because she wants to marry her boyfriend. Yeah, that's you know why. I mean? And then people go, oh, my God, you Muslims. It's like, nah, boo. That's mental health and, and terrible and culture. all of that, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. feel like one thing I'll do is take away that side. Mm. And because Asian culture is so beautiful. Like yeah. we're so loving, giving. And when I say again Asian, I don't like saying Asian because it's, it's not. It's such a broad. It's such a broad. Like yeah, in yeah, Asia, yeah. it's so big. It like, is. We've got so many different looks, people. Black, and that's why even the continents. Because the were South Asian, East Asian, completely different. different. And even the continents were named by. When you say man. Asian, what do you mean? I mean Bangladeshi refer? culture. I swear to God. That's, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's what I'm talking about. Disclaimer, when she says Asian, she's not referring yeah, to just, any I'm other just, country. No, just Bangladesh. Like, Af- and Af- are you ignorant? <laughs> now, do you know what it is as well? Is Bengali people are very different to other Asians. Yeah, yeah. Because we've faced different struggles. Yeah. We're darker There's different history. There's different history. Yeah, our yeah. features are a lot more fuller or broader and we faced a lot more racism even in mm. the uk compared to other asians that are a lot more privileged and even also probably I mean? racism or like um colorism amongst your own like yeah just, uh, like the just, colorism is so bad that's a whole oh, different that's thing. a whole different it's so bad but when i talk about and bengalis i feel like we're one of the cultures asian cultures that mix with other cultures a lot more we're a lot more inviting we're mm. a lot more and i think we put more importance on faith than we do culture yeah, that's important. We definitely put, and we're we're a lot. More, we're just open minded. We've got Hindu. You're neighbors. trying to say you're more of a vibe, yeah? One hundred percent. We could do a survey. We're so we could all do with a Bengali friend. One hundred percent. We're yeah. lit. Like we bring you. Shout food. to Fizz. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring you food. We'll like you know t- even taking care of your children. Like yeah, it's something it's in our culture we do. Like yeah, but no, I love Bengali people. Nah, that's cool. I'm starting a Bengali podcast. Having said that, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. Tongue. I can't wait. Yeah, because I want my generation. Do you think you, you think you'll get pulled up for your na- how you speak? No, I speak fluent because I told you I'm fresh. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you a story. Yeah, Go so ahead. I was going to Bangladesh with my friend yeah, who's yeah. Kenyan. Mm. So she's East African, um, and to be fair, she looks she could pass as Bengali because, like yeah. I said, we're dark and we've got similar hair types. Mm. Anyway, so um, we're going with my two year old daughter. So we stopped in Dubai for two days. And then I, say t- I said to her, look, I bought her so- some solo camisas. And I said, I'm not going to lie. We're going to wear it from Dubai. And we're going to take the plane to Bangladesh. We're not going to wear any English outfits. You're them, you're them, you're them Khaligis, Emiratis that wear the niqab and stuff. And then when you get to the next no, thing, no. like, pop, 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 pop. Wish, back off. I wish this looked like, I wish we wore a buyer. <laughs> but that, that would have given away we're British and we're foreign. Do you get what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I went blend. looking like home girl, like, like the <laughs> maid on the streets. So I'm now in, I'm on the plane. <laughs> I'm on the plane and my service from London to Dubai, epic. Because I had makeup on. I was looking bougie. My hair was short as well. I looked nice. beautiful. You know, everyone was like, what can we get you next? This and that. My daughter, oh yeah, what can we get her? Cool. Now I'm on the plane two days later. Village woman. <laughs> <laughs> Village woman. When I say it's also the most freshest salwa kameez that you can find. Flowery. I'm going to put a picture. I'm, I'm going to send you, you to intern a picture. Yeah. Listen, we looked like... We're from the hood, yeah. It sounds like you're trying to smuggle something. Look fresh, man. Look fresh. Listen, <laughs> so now I got on the plane from London, uh, Dubai to Bangladesh, and the whole demographic of the plane was Bangladeshis that don't listen. When I say uh, the fresh workers that work from Bangladesh yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't listen to the air hostess. People would be like, sit down. They'll be trying to bring out their bags when listen, the plane's I've, landed. Listen, I've been on a plane <laughs> from Dubai. I can't remember where from Dubai to London, and there was like a transition from Egypt. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. 
and it was predominantly that, a Bengali flight. And I was like, ah, okay, this yeah. is different. No, it's a, so different. It's such a different experience. It's like, there's, there's a whole like supermarket yeah. happening. Like there's a whole vibe. Listen, there's a whole reason I don't go in Bangladesh Biman <laughs> because when you're on that, that's for straight nine hours. You've got yeah, that. Yeah. Whereas when I go from Dubai, it's only six hours or four hours. I can deal with you, you that. You can deal with it. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm now on this plane mm. and where especially Bengali women, if they go to Dubai, they're often nannies or caretakers of homes. Do you get mm-hmm. what I mean? So, or that's me politely saying, or shall I say servants? Do you get what I mean? Mm. They're often servants. So I'm there looking like a fresh mum with my friend and I've got a fair baby that looks as Arab as you can think. So I look like I'm smuggling the child out, right? Turn your mind, so, turn your mind. <laughs> imagine like, be quiet. So I'm on this, you know, and the air hostess is now looking at me and I'm saying to her, can I get the- Say air hostess one more time? See, I told you I'm two cultures. My fresh side is coming out, yeah. <laughs> so she's I'm, getting I'm, deeper into the Bengali <laughs> culture. I just <laughs> unpacking Listen, the story. I'm telling you. I'm going to start speaking silly now from now on. Uh, so. Yeah, what she yeah. said. <laughs> so I'm not asking for the carry cot. Now, mm. when I was going to Dubai, they gave me a carry cot. I mean, it's the yeah, thing yeah. you put on the front. For whoever doesn't know, it's the little seat you put in the front of your so you seat. You dump your child your and baby. hope they sleep. The seat, exactly. So I've asked for the carry cot. And I've asked the man. He's now like, mm, how old is your baby, ma'am? I'm like you know, under two. Oh, I need to ask my manager. Okay, she's she's now gone to the manager. The manager then comes to me and goes, I'm so sorry, but you cannot have the cot for the baby. Safe. I said, I said, I'm so sorry. Why are you speaking to me like this? Oh, sorry. I didn't realise you speak English. Do you get what I mean? I mean, it's your fault, man. You look fresh. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. They're only trying to and help you. She out. was rude when I say she yeah. was so rude. She was like dismissed. Did her like, attitude fix when you spoke? A hundred percent. She she got that carry cot ASAP. Mm. <laughs> ASAP. She got yeah. it ASAP. Anyway, as soon as I landed, now I said to my friend, "Look, when they asked to touch our suitcase, we do not say yes because mm. they'll take your suitcase and then they'll demand fifteen, twenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all about tipping. Yeah. tipping and it's tipping. not it's not like a quick, you know, because they know you don't have the currency. They'll be like, "Yeah, we'll take pounds. Yeah, we'll, yeah, what yeah, pounds do I have to give small. you? I say dollars, pounds. Yeah, everything's strong right and now. That's it." So I'm now taking my own suitcases off, blah, blah, blah. And obviously from Dhaka to Silet, we had a domestic flight because I'm from Silet. Mm-hmm. But in Dhaka, we're quite known. My family's known. So we had like services right, anyway. Right, right. But it was a domestic flight from Dhaka to Silet. Mm-hmm. So I've now gone there and I've landed in Silet. Someone tried taking my suitcase. I said, bye. It ain't happening, mate. Like, I'm not from, I'm from here. I said to them. I don't have dollars. No, not even that. I said, I said, I came on a domestic flight from Dhaka to Silet. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm Sileti. I'm from the village, so they said okay. They didn't even touch. They didn't yeah, even question yeah. it because yeah, yeah. my when I say I speak fluent Mughali, they didn't question it, right? So cool. I've now taken off my suitcases. My family are now waiting at the gate, and one of the my cousins from back home says, "Oh, isn't that like Soraya? For like, I think that's her." My brother goes, "No, they look like workers." <laughs> that was a plan. It worked. You fulfilled <laughs> so, your goal. This is what I'm saying, but like, yeah, I wasn't harassed. <laughs> to conclude, yeah. so to you're conclude, that foreign. My, my Bengali is that good that I can go there and act like, yeah, I'm from. The but you, you finesse the whole situation. The whole situation, you have to, nice. especially traveling with a young child. Because imagine two women, and we traveled around Bangladesh as well, back mm, and forth, back mm, around mm. the villages, everything, and it was good. My friend loved it, by the way. She was Kenyan, she loved it. That's so. And she, she was embraced by the community. Yeah. yeah and obviously, yeah. like, she's black. Do you get what I mean? She's a black woman. Mm. She went with me, and obviously, we well, have she, racism she, and colorism. Did she feel a bit reluctant coming or apprehensive? No, no. But mm-hmm. again, because she, she's she looks Asian, she had a very different experience. I'm sure if she yeah, was bla- yeah. a black woman who was fully looking like a black woman, it might be different. It might even be positive racism. That's the reality. Yeah, but I think um, definitely the BLM movement has changed, shifted colorism a lot in Asia, which oh, has helped interesting. me. interesting. Yeah, it's really helped me. That's well. Yeah, so I was so pro-BLM because I felt like the... Dark the girls. scandals, scandals come out about the whole BLM thing. Do you know yeah, the whole the Kanye West and yeah. the White Lives Matter? This guy's trying to provoke the world. People are burning Yeezys out yeah. here, and I'm like, yeah. give me your Yeezys. Yeah, I don't yeah. care about him. Yeah. Give me your Yeezys. That's killing me. But do, do you know what it is? It's every there's always charities that take advantage. Do you get what I mean? But the whole yeah. movement stood for something completely different. It wasn't to try to finesse people or whatever. It was I more... think the overall what it created. Yeah. Um, as far as inclusion in workplaces and yeah. as far as people actually coming together. It's, it's been a beautiful thing to see. But as far as the money, yeah, people being, pumped. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure p- some people were so passionate that they gave their last dollar, pound, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. To these charities thinking, like, we need to step advantage. up and make it. Yeah. yeah. I think it was like yeah. something just wild, like nine million or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. it was spent on like strippers. Ah, 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 ah. 
ah, I don't want to know the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a whole documentary that's coming out yeah. about it. I think I don't know if it's come out already. Yeah. But yeah. No, there's always some people that are taking advantage, and it's a shame because people focus on that. But it's like, like even from the BLM movement, uh, we had a queen called Fair and Lovely. I'm not sure if. You oh, know listen, that. my mum used Fair and yeah, Lovely. Yeah, we use that religiously. Isn't that it, so sad? It's so, but that changed. You know, they changed the marketing and they called Good. it Glow and Lovely. <laughs> Wait, but it still does the same thing. Still bleaches your yeah, skin. Yeah, it still bleaches your skin, Dead. but they can't say fair. Do you and know? I anymore. didn't realize how deep it was until my mum was always using fair and lovely. She's from Sudan. Mm. It was a normal thing to moisturize a fair and lovely, fair yeah. and lovely. Until one day, I found that that was a bleaching, and I'm like, "Mama, no!" But it's because she faced colorism yeah. back yeah, home, yeah, yeah, yeah. and when she moved to Egypt, yeah. same thing. And when yeah. she came to London, same thing. So it was it was just normal in her culture to use fair and lovely. You know? Whereas for me, I'm like, "Yo, I'm just trying to catch a tan." Yeah, yeah. Please, like, I'm yeah. praying these lights do something yeah. for me right now but <laughs> but you know what it is is when i was young when mm. i and when i say young i was about nine ten Mm-mm. i used to scrub my skin hard that's it because i was told that it's dirt on my skin yeah yeah so like in asian culture they think you're not scrubbing hard enough if you're not fair it's so do you know how ignorant that is like you've got science science yeah. is real <laughs> biology is Listen, real i had a cousin that their mum mm. used a scoura you know the wired scalp. Oh, what, was shoot! It to scalp? like use for yeah, that you yeah. I, I just call it the silver the, thing. The silver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very Stella technical. Still, st- st- stand st- still, stand, stand still. still. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, like no, they used to scrub their child with That's that because they thought that it's gonna lighten their skin. Doesn't and it show you like years of just like passed down like cultural ignorance no, information? But, you, but this is, you know what it is, Hebs, and I think this is what people don't also understand is. Like, cause my mum is from that culture, and I can, mm. cause I've had to ha- understand her mindset. Now she's obviously it changes, cause now mm. she's educated. But when that's just your fixture and that's what you've been told, you're gonna obviously no, no. But to what it. I'm saying it's, yeah. it's it's blindly followed because that's all you know. Cause that's all you know. But it's not like they're but trying that's the to be malicious. Of us. No, 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 exactly, no, no, no. Yeah. That's the beauty of us. We're able to dissect what our parents saying. We live in a different, 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 vibe, different yeah, continent, yeah. different everything. Like where we have a whole new lens. We have a whole different generation of like having access to information all they got information from was the aunties and some uncle yeah. and some rumor they've heard yeah, yeah, across yeah, the city yeah, yeah. so what your mum yeah. did wasn't wrong no, to what no, no, she no, knows to what, when yeah. certain, but it's when you continue yeah. it like, yeah. per, like certain women circumcise their, 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 their daughter still yeah and because that's their culture that's their yeah, culture yeah. but then now, now you've reached a point of knowledge yeah, this is you where you stop to, yeah. do you but know then, what I mean but then a lot of these cultures also have very internalised misogyny yeah so the women very much push these agendas because they suffered mm. and it's like you must now suffer that's wild I, a, i've heard like, an interview would, yeah. where the woman was like well i felt like my even though i knew it was wrong but i felt like because i went through it they have yeah, to go, they have through, to go it. through it like, but sis, this is where you speak yeah. up and be like nah you ain't going on no holiday no, no, no. to somalia to nowhere, nowhere it yeah. happens in egypt as well the poorer places nowhere yeah it's wild See, it's not never we, in we, we keep digressing to different <laughs> different things yeah no but, but even forever. that people think it's religious and it's like no, no. it's got nothing to do with that's religion. that's that's the biggest thing that i try and like sort of try and dissect in on my podcast which is there's such a huge difference between yeah. culture and faith yeah culture is a beautiful thing yeah. but i think there's so much misled information there's so yeah. much stuff that has agendas yeah i think people who same thing happens with faith if you want to be muslim jewish christian you can come with a different whether you're a narcissistic man or a feminist woman you will find that faith narrative that suits you yeah and you would use that and push, push it, it. To your agenda yeah, but exactly. then culture is a much more dangerous place because there's a lot of things that contradict faith yeah but then for the for the ignorant mind whether you're a bengali person looking at me whether it's a, a nigerian person looking at me or whoever we all have stereotypes of what yep. we think that person should yep. be when actually well, that's faith, and it's like that's not faith. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with faith. Yeah, not even close. When we, like when we, the, my biggest prime example of the whole jihadi thing, like firstly, internal jihad is the biggest jihad, which exactly. is we constantly constantly Const- battle with ourselves, 100%, trying to 100%. F- like adhere to faith, but yeah. s- but society and the devil yeah. is trying to distract you. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But then, if jihad is what you think it is, what you see on media. All of you guys will be blown up by now. Let's yeah, face exactly, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because there's a lot of Muslims there's around you, bro. Muslims, exactly. And <laughs> so this is, this this is, is like, take yeah. a minute take a minute, and just yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I said, like, my jihad was coming on time today. Do you mm, get what I mean? Like, mm. people don't realise jihad is your daily struggle. Yeah. In, in life. It's not about I don't you. think I don't think it's your jihad, though, bro. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy being late. Like, you're like, let me just see <laughs> how much I can provoke you know? this woman today. <laughs> and I'm going to pull up a full energy. What are you going to say? Yeah, what are you going to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. No, but it's like, you know, um, cause so, like, my biggest problem with the Haram police, mm. just say, is they don't realise how much damage they do. Because I would hate to be the person that has said the wrong thing to someone. To push them and away. push them out of the faith. 
Do you know, I've had that. I've had people who, men especially, who pushed the whole hijab thing. Yeah. I said, bro, this is no longer yeah, dawah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. have now yeah. put me off yeah. putting on a yeah. hijab. Yeah. You've hurt so yeah. many people by just talking at yeah. them. And they could have been this close to putting yeah, yeah, yeah. it on. Or, or this close to, to joining. in the faith. Staying yeah. in the faith. Yeah. And you said one thing yeah. that's taking you 10 steps back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think you're on your high horse giving dawah. But there's levels to dawah. No, exactly. Dawah is the most beautiful thing if yeah. done correctly. Yeah. You're just like, ah, this guy just, or this woman just schooled me. And I didn't even realise yeah, I was being schooled. Yeah, I didn't realise, exactly. Mannerism of, is so important. But even like, for example, um, I, I know so many people that go actively talk hate on Islam because their culture has made them hate it. Yeah, and yeah, they can't yeah. differentiate Learn for yourself, sis. that it's the culture. Like, for example, GM on women. Mm. It's your culture pushing that. It wasn't Islam, it's but you hate Islamic. Islam because it was a Muslim man saying you must now do it. Mm. But he's also p- using he's his human. position of power. Yeah. For yeah. his culture, whatever, like his yeah. worldly desires. And and I think it's really sad because people don't realise how much damage they do. And mm. like me, I if someone asks me what my faith is, I will say it. I With chess. Yeah, exactly. And it's my mm. mannerism that hopefully will make them want to say, like, why are you like this? Like, yeah, yeah. how is this your mindset? Um, I would hate to be, like, having to cuss people out to say, and force, and you can't force someone to wear a hijab. What are they wearing it for to fair you? Do you get what I mean? It contradicts the whole faith. Yeah, yeah. When I put on a hijab, quick story before we wrap it up. But um, when I put on a hijab, I went to the gym. Like everyone knows, I go to the gym wearing a crop top, like layers. Yeah, yeah. You can see yeah. it, everything out. Okay. And then this, the man them approached me. Yo, hey, what are you saying? I was like, okay. I was expecting like a reaction. Like you go, the one guy's like, heba. You walked in. I thought you wanted the man them. I'm not gonna lie. You put your hoodie on. <laughs> the, 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 the cap. And there's like, but then I saw it's you. And then they, they're like, kind of hug you. I'm like, come man. Like. But starting deep. Then I had this PT woman watch me for a couple of days. She came up to me. She went, "Are you okay?" I said, "Uh, oh yeah." Gosh. She's like, "You look a bit unhappy." I said, "Why am I unhappy?" She went, "I've noticed your styles changed." Oh, I went, "Ah, oh, baby girl. Okay, let's hear this." And she's like, "Um, like I just, you know, I've seen you cover up, and I know like a lot of men make women wear it, and it's like, you know, it's forced, and otherwise you'd be disowned." I'm like, "I don't know what book you read, or what sun headline you read." <laughs> But nah, this is my choice. This is like, I mean, heads up, like just a little insight information. The majority of women, especially in the Western world, are wear it. It's purely through growth and the love 100%, for God. 100%. And it's something like you're willing to devout yourself a little bit more. 100%. And you unlock levels. As yeah. you get closer to any faith, you unlock different yeah, things. Exactly. It, hijab could have been the last thing, could have been the first thing. But you unlock certain things at certain points in your life where you go, I'm good with this. Yeah. And I'm content. But she looked at me like... I, like she felt bad yeah, yeah. and i'm like do, do you want a hug because i don't need a hug like I'm, i was watching her and i was just like are you okay and she's like so you're happy and i'm like baby girl i wear this with chess and it's crazy because like what's happening in iran versus what's happening in, in yeah, france it's like they said two yeah, very conflicting exactly. things and this is this the is iran the- thing is a culture and exactly, it's a culture. And even like when I saw like the Iranian women having to burn the scarf, obviously people say it's disrespectful towards. That was a wild wow. sneeze. <laughs> no, Bless no. you, sir. Um, it's like they'll say it's disrespectful to Islam because also plus that image in history could be tainted in so many different ways. That's it. But then you have you have a Karen. What's she going on? Oh, look at these Muslims. Yeah, the yeah, same exactly. way just by being black, people go, "Oh, look at this black man." No, no. that was an individual. That's a culture. That's a cult. No, that's but a whatever. even even now, if I was to make a political movement and burn a hijab as a representation that women have a choice. If it's for religion, they have a choice to wear it or not. That's mm. not on you to force it by law Mm-mm-mm. or not force it by law. Like you can't 100%. force me not to wear it or fo- force me to wear it. So me burning it is for that movement. But in history, they can just manipulate it and say Iran- Iranian women didn't want to wear a hijab and they were burning it. But I'm not going to lie, but that's how I got it. I got it as Iranian women because it's such a culturally forced thing they now are turning against the hijab, not Islam. I don't know how they perceive it. I don't, I've never sat down and spoken to anyone, but they're turning against hijab. And it's, it's happened. It's happened in Sudan. It's happened in Egypt, but the hijab was a big thing that it became a not so big thing that it became a yeah, movement. Yeah. And it's, it's controlled, unfortunately, by, by men predominantly. And there's yeah. other deeper reasons yeah. behind it. But my point is, like people fail to understand what we wear as Muslim women, like whether I want to wear a hijab, whatever, whatever. These are my sins and these are my choices. 100%. These are my journey. 100%. These are my struggles. And whatever I choose to wear, unless you see me like blink twice at you in struggle, <laughs> like understand this is solely <laughs> yeah, a personal yeah, yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. And people look at me today and be like, you're not really hijab. I can see your legs. I can yeah, see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I don't care. Yeah. So the haram yeah, place yeah, is going to come at me. I don't, 
I ain't got that much <laughs> thick skin, but I'm gonna try my best. To no, fight but th- it. but this is the problem. Yeah, is mm. the fact that why I love Islam so much is because the same way I should wear a hijab or cover myself is the same way you can't take a second glance. Yeah, and you can't lower so, your gaze, yeah, my friend. You must lower your gaze. So Islam is very fair. Mm. The same way you mustn't look at me, even if I'm walking naked on the street. The second time you're looking is for Satan. Don't mm. look up, yeah. and you're not allowed to judge me on top of that. Mm. so that's what's beautiful that's about the Islam. issue there's a lot of judgment but then but as humans we're flawed we're flawed and, and then therefore the we choose exactly. to make judgment yeah. and we choose to stereotype yeah. or we choose to share ex- yeah. information but it's based on what race yeah. we're exposed to exactly but even that's the thing if i'm if i'm walking the streets naked that's the sin on me that's for me yeah, to deal yeah, yeah, yeah. with god on myself your sin you need to lower your gaze the first yeah, one you, you do, do your that, part i'm gonna yeah, do my part exactly you, you just worry on yourself and yeah, do your thing when a guy goes oh sissy i'm like well you pay close attention then sir should you be lowering <laughs> you um, too much that first glance was too long that's it do you know what i say joke around i'd be like, like lower your grades all right let me just take one look like proper proper look before i lower it in it like when i see a fine thing back in the day i'd be like oh. anchor <laughs> anyway on that note I just say, I suffer, I suffer, I suffer. yeah yeah afterwards isn't it? it's like oh he's fine <laughs> what are you doing girl like, yeah. but, but he's can he is he muslim i don't know <laughs> do you know what's crazy because we joked now about this watch the haram police calm oh down. listen sis i've had my fair share oh, ah, yeah. i've had my fair share but don't let me just let you know now you can't push me away from islam so come yeah do you get yeah, what i mean yeah. like my faith my dealings with god is different so whatever you can say you can say but yeah. my faith it's is harder strong. when it's from your own people as well it's 100%. wild but sorry Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having I have, me. I have, an, I have an exit okay. question for you. But before I do that, yeah. can you let people know where you're at, how they can find you and any up and coming projects? Okay. So add me on Soraya.says underscore. I don't know. I couldn't get the right name. Sorry, um, on Instagram. I'm hopefully trying to start my own YouTube channel just so I can start my po- po- um, podcast. Mm-hmm. I want to do an all native Sileti where we don't speak a word of English. That's sick. <laughs> Maybe some bits, you know, when it gets hard. Um... <laughs> Or like, yeah, for white people. Um, yeah, a Sileti one. And also I want to do like my own one where we just like dissect. Because obviously I feel like I'm a blend of cultures. and Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I want to exchange some life experiences. Wicked. And I've got a show coming up with the BBC radio. So you might hear me more on the radio soon. Yeah, I'm excited. But the problem is I don't listen to music. So yeah, someone might need to just help me with the music side. I got you, man. Yeah, I'll talk the talk. I, I call yeah. my husband all the time. Perfect. He's like, who? And I'm like, ah, oh, baby boy, you yeah, live yeah. under a rock. Yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> Listen, I I don't even know, like, yeah, let me not embarrass myself before. That's cool, we'll stop there. Save, save your street cred, innit? <laughs> but, yeah. um, all right, my question is, would you rather know when you're going to die oh. or how you're going to die? Don't kiss your teeth, Aladdin. I've got two minutes. <laughs> This is hard. I'll say when. When? Why? Um, just because I feel like I want to be in the best state of my life when I die. Okay. I want to be the best version of myself. And it's not because people might be like, oh, you know, she's fitting the shopping or she's doing things like she wants to become the best Muslim and then like God to forgive her. It's not that. It's more like I want to be in a pure state. I want to mm. have like wudu. I want to be like have ghusl. Do you get what I mean? I want to be in the purest state that I can be. To yeah, pass yeah, yeah. On. And spiritually as well in the most. So you, you switch state. up the game once you know. Not even. Yeah. Like hopefully I want to because I would hate to be like. Oh, if you knew it was 20 years ago, 20 years to come. Would you be like, I'm going to live my best life now, and then do two to repent <laughs> you know afterwards? No, I don't feel like I even live my best life like that. Do you mm-hmm. get what I mean? I feel mm-hmm. like I aim to live my best life anyway, in my whatever situation. And hope, like, I like to adhere to the faith as much as I can. Mm. So I hope that that stays. But it's just more like, if I know it's 12 o'clock on this day, I just want to make sure like I'm, you know, ready. I wear my nice clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know make sure everything's is. done ready so yeah. no one has an awkward situation yeah, going yeah. Mm, yeah, she had yeah. holes in her yeah. pants <laughs> yeah do you get what I mean yeah yeah no, like you. one thing about my nan's passing because we could see that she was and like alhamdulillah she had such a amazing passing and it was so blessed like we could prepare her properly and the family where I cut her nails like we washed her she bathed her and we just prayed around her and we prayed mm. for like a good 12 hours and she passed with about 20, 30 of us just praying around her. That's incredible. Yeah, and I thought that's how I want. And I think that's why I'm not scared of death anymore because I, I saw such an amazing exit and mm. I was like, I want that. But you got to be ready. We'll talk yeah. about this in a different topic yeah. for a different time. Oh gosh, but it's yeah. about being ready. Not yeah. being, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of dying because I'm not ready. 100%. Am I ready to stand 100%. for God now and say like, yo, this is me. And <sighs> this is like, uh-uh, yeah. I ain't ready. Yo. No, exactly. But Soraya, thank you so much. Yeah. Guys, you have been watching, listening. <laughs> 
Brits who grown up Brits ish. You can follow us on grown up Brits ish dot h on Instagram or my own handle, which is I am Hebs, um, and also on YouTube Mama Hebs. And I'll see y'all later. Grownish, smartish, British. We are British, apparently. Uh-huh. <laughs>